we're going to talk about how and where to use it, do some playing demonstrations, and during story time, we have a cautionary tale. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace. And if you're interested in saxophone master classes, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to make your blues just a little bit more bluesy. Now today we are talking about the blues scale, but before that I have to say a big thank you to those of you that bought me coffee last week. I am well caffeinated, playing uh, quicker than normal and feeling good. So thank you very much. Your support to the Academy means a lot to me. So let's talk about the blues scale. First, what is it? Well, it's a hexatonic scale, which is a six note collection. Because hexa, the, the root means six. You probably didn't need a doctorate in music to figure that out. So let's talk about the recipe. How do we build it? Well, we start with the tonic, which is a good place to start a scale, which simply means the first scale degree. We have a flat third, a fourth scale degree, a sharp four, a beautiful passing tone leading to the fifth scale degree, also called the dominant. Thanks, music theory. Now you'll notice there's no sixth scale degree. Sorry, submediant. And we jump to the flat seventh. So why are music educators so quick to teach this scale? And when I was a band director, I did the same thing. Well, it's kind of a unique multi-tool, this blues scale. It works over a variety of situations. In minor key areas, that flat third makes it right at home. And if you notice, it's kind of a minor scale to begin with, with a passing tone being that sharp four. And in major key areas, that flat third and flat seventh are very juicy, bluesy sounding notes. So although it isn't in the key of G major in this example, it really works if you use it in the right context, creating a bluesy, dissonant kind of rub to the sound. Think of it like a potent spice. Used correctly, it can really spice up the dish. So let's get you playing and do some exercises. But first, a cautionary tale. Once upon a time, there was a saxophonist that lived in the hills of Genovia named Heinrich von Bluskalsen. Heinrich loved the saxophone and jazz music very much and dreamed of one day playing at the local jam session. Well, after many years of practice, the fateful day came where Heinrich went to the local tavern and played his favorite jazz standard. were so many, and the chord changes went by so fast that Heinrich became lost and confused. And the children pointed and laughed and said, Herr Heinrich is lost. Herr Heinrich doesn't know the notes. Herr Heinrich plays all the wrong notes. Heinrich became very scared and sad and vowed one day to return and play all the right notes. Over the next several weeks, locked away in his Schuttenhausen, Heinrich vowed to develop a scale a magic scale that would only play the right notes. He named it the Blue Scalzen and returned to the jam session with a much different result. And the children cheered and said, hooray for our Blue Scalzen. He plays all the right notes. And the next week, he played the same scale again. But on the third week, the children pointed and laughed and said, Heinrich always plays the same notes, again and again. And they laughed, and Heinrich became very mad and vowed never to play the saxophone again. He later got a job at Volkswagen with quality control, emission standards, and fuel consumption. He's doing fine. So the moral of the story, the blues scale, you can use it, but use it sparingly. It's like cayenne pepper. Little bit, it's gonna be great. Too much, you're gonna have a bad time. So let's see how this works over a major key area. You're free to play along, do some call and response, or just simply listen the first time through. We're seeing how this fits over a major key area, how those flat thirds and flat sevens kind of rub and create a dissonance with the normal key area.
So that's gonna get old quick. So let's add in some tones from the major scale and add more flavors. We've already got the sour, let's add the sweet. <laughs> So you may have noticed a lot of this language sounds very similar to the language we used last week when we started introducing tones from the bebop scale, and that's no accident. When I'm improvising, I'm not thinking about a particular scale, I'm thinking key area. So if I'm improvising over the large key area of G major, I'm thinking G major, all those tones that work in there, and then adding colorations. All 12 tones work in any given key if you use them correctly but any chromatic alteration needs to happen on the foundation of a good melody. Think of a good melody like the perfectly cooked steak. You can add other flavors on top of it, some garlic butter, some blues crumbles, the blues scale. It can make it even better, but if the steak is not good, if you've burnt it or it's a bad cut of meat, it doesn't matter, it's not going to be good. Start with the melodic line, the steak, then add the flavors on top of that as you go. And you find those flavors, how to use them, through call and response exercises like we've been doing over the past couple weeks and transcribing great recordings. So let me know in the comments below your favorite blues solo. I will see you next week with kind of the culmination of all we've been doing thus far. I'm really excited and mark your calendars for the beginning of June. I also have a very special invitation and a big announcement coming up that I'm very, very excited about it. In the meantime, experiment with the blues scale and most importantly, go practice.